choose the correct verbs for the blanks in the following sentences. Pause the video and see if you can find the correct verb for each sentence. When you have finished, restart the video and I will explain the answers. Here are the answers to the questions you just tried. Number four, last semester I had seen the posters about joining Sigma Kappa Delta, and now that I am eligible, I have joined the English Honor Society. So this one has to do with verb tense, and here is a little explanation about past tense verbs. And so the first verb, the verb you have to choose, is in past perfect tense. That's the third sample there. There is another video on verb tenses and a, a little bit on irregular verbs that I will include on the end screen of this video. Um, so if you have more questions about verb tenses, um, there are recommendations on that video that you can look over. So our next sentence was, you should never expect to get a study guide in a college class because students in college take notes in each class so they can create their own study guides. So here we have students as the noun that we have to relate to the verb. Sometimes people get confused when there is a prepositional phrase between the subject that we're trying to connect to the verb and the verb itself. Here we have students in college. College is one, it's singular, so that sometimes confuses people. So the re recommendation is to cross out prepositional phrases like in the house or in college or on the couch, whatever it happens to be, uh, cross out the prepositional phrases. Um, I will include um, in the notes for the video a link to prepositional phrases if you need a review of that. Number six, your English 101 grade will be earned by your completion of four major essays, three tests, and several small assignments, each of which is integral to your success in the class. So we have a list of things in this sentence, which makes it seem like this is going to take the plural form of the verb. But we have the word each. And each, when you see the word each, I want you to think one. So write that in your notes where you took the practice test. And next to the word each, write one in really big letters. So that you remember when you see each, you're going to have the word one in your head. And you can't get more singular than one. So use the singular verb form with each. Each is integral. Okay? Um, also, of which, of is a preposition, of which is the prepositional phrase between the subject each and the verb is, we could cross out. We can just say each is. Number seven, the Lady Lions is the best team in the division. So we have something that looks plural, but we are using a singular verb here. So that's a little confusing, um, but Lady Lions is the name of a team, of one team. And there are different circumstances where you use different verbs for collective nouns. Um, you can see here um, a collective noun uh, post on the MLA website, um, style.mla.org. And here is where the information about collective nouns is. Um, so this is the same concept. Our school's marching band is called the Marching Knights. Okay, so the explanation here is many collective nouns can either be singular or plural depending on how they are used. Um, if the collective noun denotes a unit, like a team, 
or a marching band make it singular and that's what we've done here okay so here's um, the marching knights her uh, suggested sentence the marching knights is the best school band in Orlando so that's similar to what we looked at in the practice question where we have the Lady Lions is the best team in the division. Number eight, any article found on the Alabama Virtual Library, AVL, or any book in the Wallace State Library is what you must use for your research assignment. So we have two subjects but they are not connected with the word and, which would make them plural. They're connected with the word or. So the rule for that is you can ignore the first subject and just go by whether or not the second subject is singular or plural. So uh, we say any book is, okay? So that's that um, would be the subject that we are relating to the verb. Again, in the Wallace State Library is a prepositional phrase, so we could cross that out, ignore that, when we're just trying to focus on the subject, book, and the verb is. Um, we could use the word and here and make it a compound subject. In that case, it would be plural. You would choose the word are. All right, here are a couple of bonus questions I added for the discussion in this video just to make sure we covered all the scenarios to help you prepare for the actual grammar test. So we have neither. When you have either or neither, it's sort of the same concept of, as just having the word or. If you have neither or either, you're going to choose or you're going to also have the word or or nor more than likely in your sentence. So that means ignore everything that comes before either or or and just start after the or or nor. So I could read this sentence starting here. The teacher is ready for the holiday break to end. Okay, so teacher is singular here. I could swap students and teacher. So if I said neither the teacher nor the students, plural, with an S, then I would have students after nor. So I can show you that really quickly, I think. Yes, so I'm going to put students in place of teacher. Oops. Now we've reversed the subjects, the compound subjects here, or not so much compound, but separated by the word nor. So in this circumstance, we have, sorry, I didn't eliminate all of it. We have, nor the students are. So here we have neither the students nor the teacher is, or neither the teacher nor the students are. So remember, whichever one is closest to the verb is another good way to remember how you choose when you have neither or nor, either or, or which subject goes with the verb that you're choosing. Okay, here's another one with each. I think we had one previously. Remember when you see each, think one. Each of the students. Here's another example where um, people forget to cross out that prepositional phrase of the students um, and get confused because students is plural and want to make the verb plural, but that would not be correct. We would say each of the students uses not students use. So take care to watch closely for those tricky little instances of verbs and what the subjects are. Are they joined by and? Are they joined by or? Um, are there prepositional phrases between the subjects and the verbs you're supposed to be choosing? Um, so a lot of circumstances uh, will dictate how you determine which verb goes with the subject. I'll put a bunch of links for different quizzes that you can take online and things that you can read for further review in the notes for this video.